Welcome you all in your own YouTube channel of Skill Rashna Institute of Technology for the unlimited conceptual and practical knowledge about the construction industry. In this video, we are going to learn the design of a cantilever slab. Let's start with the plan. If you have seen our previous video in which we have designed one way slab, two way slab, so we have used the same plan. So for this particular design of a cantilever slab, we are also going to choose the same plan, but we are going to select the different patch of the slab. In this design, we are going to select the slab S5 and going to design as a cantilever slab. I'm talking about this particular patch of a balcony. Now let's see the particular part in the detail. We are first going to write down the basic information about the slab which we need to design. So let me select the marker. Having a cantilever span length equals to 1.5 meter, beam width equals to 30 mm, concrete grade equals to M20 and steel grade equals to FE 500. Now let's calculate the minimum depth that is the overall depth as per the deflection formula. So formula says the span upon 10. So span we already seen it is 1500 mm divided by 10. So I'm getting a value of 150 mm. Now effective depth equals to overall depth that we have already calculated minus clear cover minus half of the die of the bar. So for this slab we are going to take the clear cover as a 15 mm which is the minimum clear cover for the slab as per IS codes and for the die of the bar we are going to consider as a 10 mm. So putting the value I am getting 130 mm. Calculate the effective span that is LE. So we are having basically two different conditions. So let's try to understand with the diagram. So this is the cantilever slab which we need to go for a design. So if the first condition says I need to choose clear span plus half of the D. So clear span, this is the patch of a clear span plus half of the D. So clear span is 1500 plus D effective which we already calculated that is 130 divided by 2. So I'm going to get a value of 1.65 meter. The second condition says center of support so this is the support of a beam. So center of this support with the cantilever end. So half of the support that is 230 divided by 2 plus clear span. So I'm getting a value of 1.615. But we need to take the least of the following. So least is 1.565 meter. Now before going for a load calculation, we should be able to take the average depth of the slab because it is a tapering cantilever slab. So the minimum depth is 100 mm and maximum is the 150 mm. So I'm going to do the averaging of the same and I'm getting a value of 125 mm. So calculation of the load. We are having a three types of a load in this particular balcony slab. That is the self weight of the slab that I'm going to multiply by the overall depth, multiply by width and the density of the concrete. So density of the concrete is 25. Next is the floor finish load. So I have taken a 25 mm floor plus 25 mm thickness of a motor skate. So addition of both of them multiply by the density of the concrete that is 25. Live load I am going to take as a 5 because it is a balcony. So adding of all the three types of a load I am getting the value of 9.38 kN per meter. Now when I am going to do the design so I can't take the total load I am going to need to do the factor load or also known as a design load. So for that I need to multiply the total load by 1.5. So I'm getting a value of 14.1 kN per meter. Now calculate the maximum bending moment that is BM max. The formula for cantilever slab is factor load multiplied by L effective square upon 2. So factor load we have already calculated. L effective I have already calculated in step 2. So putting the value I'm getting 17.27 kN per meter but I want all the values in Newton mm. So kilonewton converted into Newton into 10 to 3 and meter is converted into mm that is 10 to 3. So it becomes 10 to 6. Now check for the depth. I am going to use the formula MR equals to 0 0.134 FCK into BD square. So where FCK is grade of concrete that is 20, B is 1000 mm and MR equals to 
BM max which we already calculated just we need to put the values in the formula so in the equation one equation one unknown I can easily able to calculate the value of the D so that is equals to 80.27 mm which is less than the DE uh, assumed that is 130 mm so I can easily say the section is safe in the depth to register bending now calculate the area of the steel by considering the main steel bar as a 10 mm so formula is MR divided by 0.81 DE into 0.87 FI just we need to put the values and we are taking FI as a grade of a steel that is equals to 500 Newton per mm square so I'm putting the value and I'm getting the answer is 376.96 mm square now calculating the spacing between the steel bars formula is area for one bar multiplied by 1000 upon ASD so a formula for calculation of area of the one bar equals to pi d square upon 4 for 10 mm I am getting an area of bar equals to 78.5 mm square so just putting the value into the formula and I am going to get 208.24 mm center to center spacing but I am going to make it as a 205 mm center to center we always need to remember and in my previous videos I already told to my viewers whenever we are taking a spacing I am never going to increase the value but on the other hand, I am definitely trying to make it on the lower side because when we are understanding when I am putting the spacing between the rivers, if I am increasing the spacing means I am decreasing the number of the steel bar and I am decreasing the strength of my structure. So it is always preferable to go for a on a lower side for a spacing. Now I got the 205 mm. 205 mm center to center but let me check with the maximum spacing allowed by the IS code norms so we are having a two conditions that is 3 DE so multiplying 3 by D effective I am getting 390 mm and second condition is 300 mm so least of both of them is 300 mm which is whatever the spacing I am providing that is the within the limit of a maximum permissible spacing provided by the IS code hence I am going to provide 205 mm center to center calculation of ADSD so in this case I am taking 8 mm bar so the formula is 0.12 percentage of the cross-sectional area so putting into the formula 0.12 percentage means divided by 100 and cross-sectional area means I have taken the width that is 1000 mm multiplied by the average depth just putting the values into the formula I am going to get ADST equals to 150 mm square now I need to calculate the spacing so formula is same area of a one bar multiply by thousand divided by AST putting the value now area of a one bar for 8 mm bar is 50.3 so putting the value I'm getting 335.33 so we remember we need to take her on the lower side so I'm going to make it as a 335 mm center to center now checking with the maximum spacing allowed by the IS code so that is 5 DE multiplying by the DE I am getting 650 and the second criteria is the 500 mm so both list of them is 500 mm and which is within the permissible limit which I want to provide so I want to provide a spacing of a 335 mm center to center which is within the limit of a maximum spacing allowed by the IS code now moving to the schedule and the sketch that is the final step so on the basis of the calculation which I have done I am going to prepare a schedule and the sketch for the same if you learn something new from this video kindly like and subscribe to our channel you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook link is in description thank you for watching see you in the next video